It is my pleasure to introduce Allison Hayden, who is running for Congressional District 14, 14 in, over in Alameda County. She is a tough lady. I've known her for several years. And uh, let me, you'll have to hear her story. <laughs> Well, when I look at the, the people that are showing up at all of these engagements that introduce candidates and give us an opportunity to talk about solutions, that's what really excites me because America is waking up. Americans are waking up. It, it's taking the pain, and there'll be much more pain, but it's a good thing because, as Jack just said, we are at a precipice. We are watching the dis destruction, dissemination of our all our institutions, uh, everything that we've come to to love. Uh, we're watching the underbelly be exposed, and we can thank Trump for that. But you know, I think many of many of us knew that things weren't right, but now we really do know that something major has to happen, and it is a revolution. But when we have this kind of very ugly ugliness, as we know, that is the opportunity, and it is a golden moment in America. I grew up, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, I'm born Californian, uh, but just a couple months after I was born, my dad's military, and we went to Taiwan. And I grew up in Taiwan, basically. I went to, started Chinese schools there. Chinese is my first language. It really stinks now, but, uh, so I don't tell it very much. But I grew up, um, the pale face in a, in a Chinese, a sea of Chinese, and loved it. I, you know, um, went to Chinese school, as I said, and then we came back to the States for a couple years, went back for a couple years, came back and forth three times. Third time, he was retired, and we returned as expatriate business. He was with the Fortune 100 company, and we were in Gaoshan. Um And from there, I guess I, I grew up under the specter of communism. We we had martial law in Taiwan, and uh, every, my dad was in OSI, Air Force Intelligence. And so the whole, um, you know, it was a very uh, difficult time, in a sense, of feeling that, that kind of strain, but it, it's normalized martial law because China and communism was, was just there, right? And uh, actually, they negotiated and they used to like uh, uh, bomb each other, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays we'll get you over here and then Monday and Wednesday we'll lob a few this way. So, you know, and there were behind the scenes trade deals going on between Taiwan and China, uh, China even the years I was there. And now it's obviously very uh, common. But knowing that, feeling that, that whole idea of, of being a representative in a sense. You're a little kid, but you're um, a military brat and and people revered America. And what, what was America? What did it mean to people uh, in Taiwan? And what, and you know, it was a proud thing to be American. And what, what the country represented in terms of freedom. And we're watching all of that really crush right now. Uh, taken away under the auspices of a, of a, a pandemic. And, you know, I, I think that Americans are, are now at this point where we were once very proud of who we are. It's like, now who are we? You know, what do we represent? We're so divided. I'm representing our congressional district in Alameda, which is about 40% Hispanic. Um, about 40% uh, white and the rest a mix of Asians um, and uh, about 7% black. You know, people in Alameda, we, uh, we've always, you know, with the exception there are some problems in Oakland 
it's a fairly homogeneous until all of this wokeness came to divide our country. Um, but as Jack said, this has been a slow, at least, uh, you know, legislatively and otherwise, um, we've been watching the erosion of what it is, you know, the sovereignty of the vote. And I, I would say the first thing I, that I'm concerned with is bringing together our, you know, what it is to be American in terms of the sovereignty of the people. Uh, if we don't get the vote back, uh, although all the numbers are good and positive, I believe in this uh, 2022, they will pull out all the stops and do whatever it takes to stay in power. And, I, and that's what I fear. You know, I, I hope that, that enough military eyes and other eyes are on it to, to really stop that from happening again. I, I don't believe that 2020 was uh, on the up and ups. As, a, as a coming in as a congressperson, I think that, that the most important thing we have to do is to give the American people hope. And, and to me, government is minimal. And we have to roll back its encroachment over the economy, over our personal lives, taking away the role of the parent. Really, uh, the American people have become the subjects. And as a congressional uh, candidate, and when I get into Congress, it is to group with all the American First candidate or uh, Congress people to roll back this whole encroachment of the federal, uh, you know, federal mandates, uh, medically, the sovereignty of the people in terms of. Um, the mandates in terms of regulations, I mean, in rolling back all of the power of the government where it's been lost. And and now Americans, I think, if, if we can, in Alameda County, if we can direct funds in a, in a targeted way to community banks and, re, you know, take out, uh, restore Glass-Steagall so that we separate really the function of banking, which is providing credit to give people the opportunity to start and to manage businesses, to bring back that enablement of wealth, accumulation, to have your own business. So we have to repeal that Glass-Steagall Act and establish a banking system which is going to reinvigorate industry from the local level, but in a managed system where the opportunities for the country using its resources are filtered down to the local level. We're talking about a space force. We already have that. Well, we could bring a space force station into Alameda. We can build, uh, reinvent education. I believe that is also, I'm a teacher now. I've been in, in finance before. I've worked with Citibank, the of A. I've been uh, overseas with them. I've, um, you know, but I think this revolution that we're encountering is really we're going to see the world sh shrink back to nation states and the power of countries to dictate, to decide their own destiny. They have to, uh, from a national banking system, we can decide what America's uh, competitive advantages are and, ha and what it is that we need to do. And in our, and coming down the community bank system in Alameda, we have our resources given our peoples and landmass and such. So this kind of coordinated banking system bringing in the power of re restoring not just parent rights, but the sovereignty of a person over their themselves, over their family, over their participation in community. When I started out saying, all of you coming out, I'm involved in a constitution class, a, a group of people who are not Republicans who are working hard to push against the system 
um, that is is taking away the rights. And we have a constitution class going. This kind of participation at the local level feeds up into the state level and really uh, into the federal level where once again, it's a bottoms up movement. We have to, uh, I think parents' rights, restoring or bringing in a re reinvigoration of our economy, um, the safety, the law, the borders. I mean, Eric Swalwell is on the Homeland Security. He's also on the Judicial Committee. They're doing nothing about the borders. This is entirely uh, the Democrat agenda right now is to change the landscape of America. Between all the fires, we're seeing that uh, the financing is going to pack and stack uh, these uh, apartment buildings. They're changing the landscape of the suburban living. It's changing. We have to, you know, when, when uh, Newsom uh, won the recall, the first thing he did was to um, sign into law SB 9 and 10, which is changing the landscape, the single family zoning. So all of this, this, uh, really it's a, it's a war on what America is, the idea of America, which is what made us who we are. And we have to re bring it back, restore it. Going to Congress at a federal level, I want to work myself out of a job in the sense of releasing the power back to the local, back to the, uh, even, even lower than the state, put the power back into the local, into the people. into um, And I believe that that reinvigoration of America, restoring law enforcement, the parent power, education being set uh, 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 you know, I think parent, uh, parent, what is it, school choice, not just school choice, but also school choices. You know, the way even real estate works is all with where, the, where you live. So there are many ways that we need to um, reinvigorate this whole, at the, from the local level. And I thank you, uh, Jack Guerrero, for, because he touched on everything that I think needs to happen from the state level if we have someone, because it always comes back to the money. If you can re, <laughs> if you can work the, the money out here in California, we have a chance in Alameda County. I think I was sharing with you some things going on there um, that we have a chance. It's corrupted, but you know what? Where there is, uh, this great void and vacuum of leadership, of law, we have an opportunity to reinvent America. Thank you.